Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We are here today with an exciting video for you. We are continuing our Pet Cemetery series and today we are bringing you our spoiler free review of the new Pet Cemetery. We actually got into an early screening, just a little bit early. And so we are here to review that for you guys today. But before we get into that, we wanted to remind you guys that we currently have a giveaway going on and we're adding something to it if you've watched our previous videos. So the book is still up for giveaway, but we snagged a couple posters at our screening. So we're also going to be giving away this Pet Cemetery poster along with the book. So link is down in the description for you to enter US only. I apologize. So go enter and click on all the things. So for some reason you haven't heard of this film before, Pet Cemetery is a retelling of the classic Stephen King novel of the same name and it's following a family that moves to a new house and there happens to be a spooky pet cemetery on their property and a lot of hijinks ensue and horror hijinks ensue. As always with our spoiler free discussions we would still like to discuss the plot without details per se. I feel like the plot of this one followed the source material pretty closely. I think that it followed a good horror movie you know, beats along the way. It was pretty well paced through most of it, I felt like. Yeah, I felt like it was pretty well paced in terms of the film. And throughout this, guys, we're going to do our best. As you know, throughout the series, we've now read the books. We've done multiple videos on that, on the book. We've done a video on the original film. So we're trying to take this as much of a standalone as we can. We will have an analysis coming soon of it compared to the other works. But... I felt like the pacing was pretty okay for this. I felt like they, at times, felt a little rushed. I felt like sometimes we were kind of jumping through time forward. But it's not that unlike the book either, so. They did make some changes to the plot of this one to make it a bit of a fresh and exciting adaptation, which may or may not go over well with people, which we're not going to discuss details on that. We might discuss a little bit more of it towards the end of the video, but no spoilers here. But there are some changes, especially to the end of the film. Yeah, I would say there are definitely some fresh twists. I wish that sometimes they had almost steered into some of those more, whereas some of them come kind of out of left field for me. But I enjoyed what they tried to do with some of them, but... I felt like some of the plot ideas they had didn't necessarily have the payoff by the end of the film. Something to note about this adaptation is that it seems like the directors took a lot of inspiration from the original movie adaptation, not necessarily the book. There are a lot of homages to the original movie in this film, which I quite enjoyed. If you haven't watched our review for the original film, we'll link it up there for you. But uh, it was fun to see those. At the same time, it kind of made it feel very similar to the original film, <laughs> which was good in some areas and not good in others. It was a little inconsistent. I felt like all the actors in this film did a good job with their characters. I thought John Lithgow did really good as Judd. I felt like the main guy, I can never remember his name. Jason Clark. Jason Clark. I, f I feel like he did a good job. I think props... To uh, Rachel, the character, the actor, actress who played Rachel. Oh, I don't remember her name off the top of my head. Me neither. You guys know who it is. But I think she actually did a really good job. I think she was probably better than Jason Clark. And props I mean, to both child actors. I think they both also did a really good job. We said something very similar of the actors in our, <laughs> uh, the original movie, where the wife was more compelling than the husband. Which it might be more due to character details. I think sure. the character of Lewis is a little bit more flat in both films, and I think that's a creative decision. So it might just be that the, you know, whoever ends up playing the wife has a little bit more uh, stuff to work with. A major complaint I have about this movie is the cinematography. I feel like this was very poorly shot. Keep in mind that these opinions are coming from people who are not, like, formally educated in these subjects. However, as avid movie lovers, the first, like, 10 to 15 minutes of this film feels like an opening to a 90s horror movie. And I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but it came across odd to me. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what kind of ideas they were trying to convey with the cinematography. Sometimes the shots felt way too close to the characters. Sometimes it was way too far. Um, major complaints about a lot of the transitions 
they honestly felt like anything in like our editing software when you click the transition button to transition scene fade in fade out it felt like those like they just slapped those in there and so i don't know quite what happened on the editing floor but if that was a conscious decision i think it was a bad one because it made it look cheap in some areas there's also a lot of scenes where they're going through like the more forested areas and there's a lot of heavy fog going on and it's very clear that it's shot on a sound stage. Um, if you've seen, is it Scream 3 that has the horror movie within a horror movie? Yes. It reminded me of like a lot of <laughs> shots from that where like it just, you can tell it's on a sound stage or there's a specific episode of Supernatural where there's like a haunting <laughs> of a, it was very similar to that, a haunting of a sound stage and a Hollywood studio. And those sh the shots in this film felt like those kind of shots, and I, I took me out of the movie a lot. There's also a couple of shots where we have some big, um, like, scenery shots with, like, sky and mountains and stuff like that, and they, like, artificially put very, very bright stars in the sky, and it looked real funky. I feel like sometimes the budget might have shown on this one, because there was even several scenes where they were, like, they were trying to hide the green screen, but it was clear the characters were very green screened compared to the setting behind them. They weren't actually in a forest, they were on a green set. So, and you could tell. With mentioning the budget, I will say though that I appreciated that pretty much all of the effects, minus a few, are physical effects. And I absolutely loved that. I feel like it grounded the film quite a bit and made it a lot scarier because it felt more real. It wasn't just a CGI effect. I think another mixed bag detail about this movie is going to be the tone. I felt like they couldn't quite decide what direction they really wanted to go in this. I felt like the first several acts of the film had a lot of like scary moments and especially there's a couple subplots there that I think were the scariest parts compared to like the main plot. And there was also some pretty egregious usage of jump scares. I'm fine with the occasional jump scare. I think they're used to great effect to throw the audience off. But it it felt like they didn't know what else to do in certain scenes. So they kept trying to scare you, especially using the same trick multiple times through the film. Which by the third time, it's not like, oh, that really got me, ha ha. It's more like, now I'm kind of pissed off. Stop doing that. Like ugh. The tone was just very inconsistent throughout this entire movie. Our showing had a lot more laughs than like scared screams or like gasps and whatnot and I don't think that was intentional from the director's perspective because the scenes are not necessarily set up like they're supposed to be campy funny like a lot of horror movies do but they ended up coming across as humorous and it was real strange I was very taken out of those moments where I'm like I feel like you're trying to make me scared but this is just humorous Unintentional camp doesn't always end up well, and it felt like they were trying really hard to not be campy, but still turned out that way, which is a little unfortunate for the film, but it does make the tone go awry. I almost wish they had just committed to the, like, half camp, half scare, but it just seemed so unintentional that it came across hollow. Although, on that note, for me personally, I felt like the camp that came across well was the finale of this. I actually quite enjoyed the finale of this, despite the changes to the source material, which we will talk much more in depth than in our next video. But uh, it, was, it was fun, as someone who's experienced two iterations of this story, having it switched up for the third iteration was quite entertaining, and I liked how it was done, and it felt a little more intentionally campy at the end. Maybe it wasn't, but it felt like it to me. That being said, I felt like some of, especially in the third act and the ending, like the payoff and all of those decisions that the movie made were more fun because we'd experienced the, the story twice. Whereas if we hadn't experienced the story at all, I think some of those decisions would have actually really frustrated me. I think I would have hated this movie if I was not familiar with any of the source material, honestly. And I'm really curious, for those of you who have already seen the film, without getting into spoiler details, let us know down in the comments, one, if you were familiar with source material, either the movie or the book, and how you felt about it, depending on that previous perspective. I'm very curious about other people's experiences with this film. And while we're doing some minor comparisons to source material, a big problem we had with the book is the heavy foreshadowing, and this movie is faithful to that, which is a negative in my opinion. Like, the movie literally opens with a shot that is the end of the film, and then we have that shot later, and I just, it's not needed, and there's just so many moments throughout the film where it's like, oh no, this thing is coming, and you're like, you didn't have to tell me that. So ultimately for us, I think this was kind of a mixed bag of a movie. There's some of 
things that we quite liked and some things that we had some problems with throughout. I think overall it was an enjoyable experience, but not one that I can like wholeheartedly recommend. I think that there's some better horror movies out there, especially when it comes to like the craft of like cinematography, sound design and stuff. I feel like that has increased so much lately, especially with horror movies in that genre, that it makes it harder to recommend something that can't quite stand up to some of those other recent films. That being said, we had fun going to the movie and we hope you guys enjoy it as well. We quite enjoyed doing this series. We have one more video coming up, so make sure you stay tuned for that where we do an in-depth analysis. That's also where you could probably save some of your spoilery comments if you have them. But while you're here, if you made it all the way through this video, one more time, make sure you go to that link in the description, join that giveaway. It's an awesome hardcover book. It's a good book. And you'll also get a sweet poster as well. Let us know your thoughts below on our thoughts and also what you thought of the movie and all your perspectives. We would like to know. Keep it non-spoilery. We'll have a whole video where you can come dump your spoiler thoughts like Steven said. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed our discussion around it and you want to see more videos like this. And please subscribe if you are interested in seeing more videos from us in the future. We will be doing more book movie adaptation series throughout the year, which I'm very excited about. And we will see you guys in our next video. Bye!